so we're going to demonstrate a full battery of the four tests. We're going to start with Q-Sweat, um, and then we're going to move on to the deep breathing Valsalva. Unfortunately, we don't have a tilt table test here, but we are going to demonstrate a stand for you today. So we have Jade here. He's going to be our test subject. Um, one of the things that we had him do to help with this was um, with the Q-Sweat, we want to make sure we're shaving any hair. Um, so because Jade works with us, we know him, we had him pre-shave, so you're not going to see that step. Um, but we are going to walk through everything that we would do as technicians. So we're going to start by cleaning the skin um, with some acetone to defat the skin, some alcohol to remove the acetone, and finally some water um, to remove any of the residual alcohol. Then we're going to dry these areas off very well um, before we go ahead and hook up the Q-Sweat device. Um, so I'm going to bring Tony up, who's uh, one of our technicians as well, um, and been with Dr. Lowe forever. Um, and she's going to... <laughs> um, so she's going to go ahead and start prepping Jade. Um, well, I'm going to get his name in the computer here, and they're going to hopefully get this computer screen up there for us um, so that you guys can see everything that's going on in real time. And particularly those in the back rows, if you feel free to... This is very, you know, un, un, uh, non-formal, so feel free to come up here and observe from closer up if you like. Yeah, come on up. It doesn't matter. And please feel free to ask questions during uh, any part of this part of the presentation. I don't need that. So the first thing I'm going to do is go in and create a new patient. So normally we utilize uh, um, acetone, alcohol, water, and then dry gauze. That's, that's sort of a really uh, nice and clean preparation that gets rid of uh, not only skin debris, but also fat and uh, um, allows for the sort of cleanest response. We are abbreviating this a little bit here. We're just using alcohol and, 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 and dry gauze. So one of the things that we have our technicians do right away is to actually start the pseudorometer device before we actually go and put this, the capsules on the subject. And that's just to be sure that everything is properly working. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and get that started after I select um, the different sites. So we're going to use the left side. That's the standard side. Um, and then we're going to go with the forearm. Let's see here. Proximal leg, distal leg, and foot, which is all predefined for us. And if, as a technician, if anything happens, we do have this on screen help for you as well as you're walking through this. Uh, you have four. You have four probes. In theory, you could use two and then do the upper limbs separate with other with two probes, right? Yes. Yep. Yeah, you can place these anywhere you want to. But I know, but it's not necessary to have four probes. Correct. 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 Now, the standard sites that we're using is 75% um, the distance between the epicondyle and the pisiform bone on the ulnar distribution. We're going to go at five centimeters proximal to the distal head, or fibular head. Five distal to the fibular head. Five centimeters proximal to the medial malleolus. And then we're going to try our best to go over the EDB muscle as much as we can. Now, that is going to be a source of, um, it, it, that's the technical aspect of it, is getting it on the foot without the leaks. Um, and so we're going to do our best to not get a leak at that. But if we do, we'll demonstrate what we would do to fix that as well. Those locations are general guidelines. You obviously have to keep individual anatomy in mind. And if uh, there's a, a, a big, big bulky uh, muscle that you can't get a seal around, you just move a little bit to the side and, and find a place where you get a good, good seal for the capsule. Within six inches of the electrode. One, two. 
So after, clean, after cleaning the side, they're just putting those capsules on with a moderate amount of pressure with those uh, elastic um, wraps here. You don't want excessive pressure to uh, cause uh, cutting off the circulation, but you, you want it snug because you, if it gets too loose, then there's leaks, and um, leaks are very annoying because but it, it takes a while for the system to dry out, and you have to wait. Um, you have patients waiting uh, that delays things unnecessarily. You want to make sure that the bottom of your capsule has enough tension so that it doesn't leak underneath. That's the major thing. Because if you get a leak, then it will flood your equipment and just kind of let the machines dry out then. So now the capsules are placed. Now we put on the ground electrodes for the stimulation and the stimulator. The syringes that are filled with acetylcholine solution are already in place as well. Now normally we would have a cart or something with all of our equipment on um, that we could actually set all these up pre ahead of time. But we're going to attach both. That's going to go in the black. Black. Black to it's black to black, red to red. One other thing to keep in mind is that um, just like for nerve conduction studies, skin temperature does play a role, particularly at the foot side. So just like ideally for nerve conduction studies, you want to keep the skin temperature at about 32 degrees Celsius, and uh, you can utilize some heat lamp or any other uh, option to, to warm up the skin a little bit before the test. Would you comment on acetylcholine solution? Am I missing something here? What, what's the specific question? Acetylcholine solution? Where do you get it? Is it microfiltered or sterile? Yeah, yeah. Um, do you want to answer? <laughs> well. That's a tricky question. Um, so there's a lot of different manufacturers that do make acetylcholine. Um, you'll just have to go with whatever's in your list of preferred vendors for your institution. Um, it's a simple 10% weight to volume mixture. Um, we use distilled water or deionized water. Um, the actual product we get is 99.9% .9 pure. Um, we have done studies looking at HPLC grade versus non-HPLC grade and have found no difference in that. So. Um, we are aware that there are some pharmacies at some uh, places that are very strict and would not allow anything uh, other than the purest form. Uh, our argument is that we are using acetylcholine not as a drug but as a reagent. Um, and uh, we have not had problems as a result of that. And we have also done stability studies on that. Um, so we did find that um, it's good for 30 days at room temperature and up to 90 days at um, uh, refrigeration temperature. You could actually freeze it as well, but we didn't find that that actually extended the life of it at all. So um, what we usually say is within three months, if you're not going to use it, get rid of it. Um, and we recommend always storing it in the fridge and not leaving it out on the counter unless you're pulling it out for the day's patients. Now, what we're waiting for now is for the screen to come down um, and these lines to kind of come to a baseline, um, which is giving us what the amount of uh, moisture is just coming off the skin um, without being stimulated. Now this is one difference that we do at Mayo Clinic um, that's separate from a lot of the other sites that I visited um, and may break the software when you go to do the analysis. And that is, is we like to put a mark in when we actually go to inject this acetylcholine solution into these capsules because what that'll tell us is if there's a leak during that time period we know that it's due to the acetylcholine being injected and not due to the stimulus um, that's about to, to start. So while we're waiting for this to come down, I'm going to go ahead and turn the stimulators on 
And so you're going to hear a bunch of beeps, and we're just going to go through some settings. And basically what we're going to do is set these so that it's going to run for five minutes at two milliamps. Mm -hmm. I should be able to. And as we're going through these, some of the settings are single phase, which is what we want. We don't use the dual phase option of these. Our polarity is going to be a plus. If you are familiar with these, your dose will be sent to 10 or set to 10. Um, and then finally, it'll start getting ready for you to ramp up the current to 2 milliamps. <coughs> Now during this time is normally once we've got these set up, we'll go over to the computer screen and we'll make our first mark and then inject these, um, each of the capsules with acetylcholine. <clears throat> and when we're filling, we like to go slow. Um, if you go too fast with it, you can actually put too much acetylcholine in too fast, which can cause it to kind of blow out and actually start to leak into that center chamber. The other couple things that are important that I'll go through when we actually start the stimulus is the way that we're filling and the way that the capsules are. And so then the first thing we would do is we would look to make sure that we do not have a leak on our screen after we've injected. Everything looks pretty well or pretty good to us here. So then we're going to go ahead and make another mark. And this is where our setup is usually conducive to the testing where we're not running from one side of the bed to the other, but just so you can kind of get the, the idea. And then we always warn our subject, you're going to feel hot and prickly. If you've never had this done, the first minute seems to be about the worst. Once you actually start sweating, it'll start to die down just a little bit. Um, so a couple of the other things that are really important is when we're filling these capsules. We always want to make sure we're filling from the very bottom of the capsule to the top. If you fill it from the top down, you're not going to get enough acetylcholine into that chamber, which is going to cause a number of problems. One, it could be a hot pocket underneath there and could actually burn the patient or it would be, feel very uncomfortable for them. Another thing is, is that these stimulators, if they don't have enough um, solution underneath there, they'll flash open. And so that's a troubleshooting component is why are these things not working properly? And there's a lot of pieces that you can troubleshoot along the way. The other thing um, with, the f with the filling and why we like to do the bottom, and we actually like to twist our capsules up just a little bit when we're doing that filling, is so that we can actually completely fill that chamber. Um, I can't stress that enough. It's one of the probably sources of error for a lot of people and trouble for a lot of people. Um, just because of the nature of the testing and the way it is, it's something that we really have to know as technicians. Tony had mentioned it just a few minutes ago, but when we're putting the capsules on, we like to use what's called the down and around technique. In other words, we're gonna go around the bottom of wherever the skin is first, the limb, and then attach it to the top side so that that bottom side makes a really nice tight seal against the skin while we're doing that. Um, we found that that actually was able to to help us prevent most of those leaks at the foot. Um, and it also allows us so that if we did have a leak or we needed to tighten one particular area at all, we're pulling it off the top and being able to tighten it one rather than trying to pull from the bottom. Um, so just some little tips and tricks that we found um, to help reduce errors or reduce some of these pitfalls of the testing. We're starting to see the responses on the screen over there. Uh, the stimulus, like I said, uh, it's like hot and prickly is what it reminds me of. Itchweed, burning nettles um, are kind of the two big terms that I've heard um, through the years. Um, some people like to describe it as a tattoo. I think a tattoo is a lot more intense um, than when you get here. Uh, TENS unit, if you've ever felt one of those, is probably another good example if you're trying to help your patient understand what they're going to feel. So we're just going to let this go for another two minutes. 
Um, once we hit the five minute mark, these stim stimulators are gonna beep at us and turn off. Then we're just gonna let Jade rest here for an additional five minutes and then we'll be done with this test. So the uh, actual integration for the analysis <clears throat> is the uh, uh, positive response doing the five minutes of stimulation and then another five minutes afterwards. So we integrate 10 minutes. The foot response is a little little uh, sluggish to take off. Um, and right. yeah. um, I mentioned before the temperature being an important factor. Apparently his feet are ice cold, so that can be part of it. But the foot response taking off a little later is actually not all that unusual. And Jay's happy. He said you could take a picture of his foot if you wanted to see the hookup here. Uh, so you had it for, for later as well. <laughs> Yeah, take them if it's on social media. No. So some of the things that I was mentioning, um, the down and around technique, so what we're meaning is, is we're putting that um, rubber strap on the bottom first, going around the limb and then tightening, tightening it. Um, the other thing that we're looking at here is um, I've, I've got this tube that is the out tube, pointed as high as we can. We actually did two of these. This one we should have actually twisted up just a little bit higher. Yeah. So I'm just going to go ahead and get all of this taken off of Jade, and then we'll start getting set up for the heart rate, deep breathing, Valsalva, and tilt.